and welcome back to my channel divinely guided tarot if you're new here my name is angel and i'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading this message could be for all signs so please remember to take only what message resonates with your particular situation leave the rest behind and as always guys thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow it is greatly appreciated now since we've had so many messages here that are referencing star seeds here. I am going to go ahead and pull our next message here with our star seed or oracle deck. And uh, we're going to go ahead and call in the Holy Spirit to please shield, guard, and protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful star seeds and collective. Um, please help me with messages that my collective needs to hear at this divine right time that they're watching it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a peek and see what the energy looks like for tonight's reading. All right. Feels good. It's been feeling good. <laughs> been trying to get a few more messages in than I normally do. Yeah, of course it's feeling good. Look at that. Lifting the veil. You can finally see. You see the light questioning everything now anything unaligned must go yes guys we've been getting this message painfully over the last few days god is forcing the enemy out of your life maybe some of you don't want to accept the fact that the people that were closest to you are the ones that were actually attacking you all along and maybe now that you're finally seeing these energies for what they are, it's, it's, it's nice that you're not being buffaloed anymore. But it's like awakening for the first time yourself all over again. Realizing that you too have been deceived by the enemy. We all have. It was hiding in our own friend groups, our own families, our own environments all along. The rat was always there. We just didn't recognize it because it had a fluffy tail and called itself a squirrel. You know? <laughs> it's just... <woo. laughs> it says, you got the love. This is codependency, boundaries. Yes, boundaries is coming back out here again. You are highly sought after. Because of your sight, because of the truth that you know, people do love you. But what happens when people are obsessed with your energy or they're in your energy? It can become quickly a toxic kind of affection for these light workers because the people that are in your energy are not vibing at the same level. So it breeds a lot of jealousy in very insecure or weak, um, weak people. Okay, and I, and I hate calling people weak, but the enemy is weak when they try to take bites out of light workers like you. When they have no idea what your spiritual ranking is. Or how powerful you are. Somebody may assume that because you are a kind person, that you are a weak person. But ultimately, it's going to be their downfall, not yours. Ooh. <sighs> Separating anything that any... Co oh, there was a codependent energy latched on you. A shadow in your mind. And I'm going to tell you why. You're not for everyone. This card has come out. This isn't saying that, you know, you need to embrace that you are that celebrity energy. That you are a divine starseed. You are unique. You're not meant to have very, very close personal relationships with, with anybody. 
most light workers will only have one, maybe two or three very close energies, you know, outside of their families. Wow. You saw somebody was latched on to you, codependent on you. And because of these boundaries that you've placed for yourself, it's made these people that you believe to be your friends very defensive. And they're walking away from you before you have to walk away from them. Sometimes the gift of sight isn't always comfortable. Sometimes when we see, that can be oftentimes a bittersweet pill. It's like opening up a bag of, of, of chocolate in your grandmother's cupboard only to realize it's that bitter chocolate, that cooking chocolate. And you're like, ew, it's not the Hershey bar I thought it was. You know, as a kid, I learned my lesson. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover, <laughs> right? Um, so interesting. Holy Spirit, let me know what's going on in this person's energy. What has my collective revealed that forced them to... to put a boundary up in their life to protect themselves. We know that my collective is a unique energy, but what is it that you have lifted the veil of? What is it that you have made my collective aware of that caused the boundary? The lesson in boundaries to be learned. Somebody violated a boundary with you but maybe not one that you made known early on to a person. Look at that, guys. This keeps coming out there with these repeat messages. Judgment. Why is all of this information coming out? Because bowls of judgment are being poured out over a planet of people. The enemy is being forced out of your arena. So we're back at lifting the veil and setting up these boundaries because of this judgment coming in. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying, God. Maybe this is something that I missed in some of the other messages that had a similar flavor to it. Um, check it out. Nine of Pentacles here on the bottom of the deck. Okay, you are being celebrated by God because of your hard work, because of your choice to co-collaborate co with the divine. You chose all the right things. You made all of the right decisions. You held value in the areas that God asked you to hold value in. You completed this cycle and you are stepping into your calling now. With this cycle change, every person that was taking love from you, advice from you, and not giving you anything in return are being called to judgment. Many people stayed a shadow in your mind, a phantom spying on you in the 5D to try to learn you like a book, to taste you. Why do I keep getting the, the word taste? Taste. The enemy has been tasting you. Your energy is tasty. That's what, like, it's, it's weird. It's just weird. So you may have a very sweet kind of energy about you, you may be as sugary sweet as pecan pie, right? Maybe you are as sweet as syrup, cotton candy, you know. Put whatever sweetness, cane sugar even, just raw cane sugar. Like your energy is addictive. It's sweet. It's alluring. You can put people in a sugar coma. 
They can OD off of your energy like that. You know, you can sustain people for long periods of time. You're like the glucose water that the people, that the, that the hummingbird needs to give them energy to be able to move on. You kind of catch my drift here? So this is how people were using your energy, by using your kindness, by using your divine love, by using your gifts of compassion. They come to you with all of their problems. They feel good after about two or three hours of spilling their heart out to you. And then you don't hear from them for a day or two. And then they come back and they do it all over again. And you get nothing in return except all of your energy going out the door to make this person feel happy. Now, if this person would just learn to hold themselves accountable, face their problems like the grown-up that they're supposed to be, you know, if they're not going to face that, they're going to keep going towards anybody who can give them that artificial feeling of freedom, of healing, but it's just that. It's an artificial high. It's no different than using you like some people use substances and alcohol to mask their pain, to hide from the truth. Hmm. Interesting. Holy Spirit, please provide a little bit more. What's more about this message? Um, what more do we need to know from my collective? Maybe something that we haven't already heard about before. Oh, asking you shall receive. The death card has come out. It's just that scripture of the horsemen of the apocalypse coming out. And that's what this feels like. This feels like horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay? The horsemen were the ones bringing the judgment out on the planet. And with the cycle closing... People didn't make it through this portal. People didn't make it through this transformation. This new cycle that began, people didn't get to go through. And those people are now being judged. They've been marked. And they've been marked for death. Now, I don't want to scare anybody because I don't like reading these kind of messages either. But I do feel like some people have had people wish death upon them. Like somebody praying and doing black magic and invoking demonic spirits to try to stop people in my collective. Like stop your hearts. Like to wish heart attacks and strokes on people. Like really evil stuff. And some of the judgment is coming out here that not only are these people marked for death, but death may actually befall them before they get to the judgment. When we say you're marked for death or we've, you've been marked for judgment, this is death coming out and saying you didn't, you didn't pass it. You didn't pass the test. You led a toxic life. And you called yourself a god among men. And you made everybody bow and worship to you. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I, I really truly feel like there's a special, there's a special place in the underworld for some of the most heinous energies. You know, some of the most evil, vile energies of the world, like the Hitlers and the Stalins, the people who commit genocide. You know, the R. Kellys of the world. The dirty politicians who rape babies. You know, I mean like, yeah, <laughs> there's a special, special place in the underworld for them. They are true embodiments of evil. But I feel like this also may be signifying a, an ending for somebody in your energy. Meaning that... This person, whoever I'm channeling right now, is going to receive divine protection from this particular um, energy from coming back into you. So let's say you've had 
an adversary for the last 15, 20 years, you know, somebody who's constantly got a tie to you that you can't seem to escape. Death has finally come to a relationship to where you're not going to have to be around certain energies any longer. God is eliminating energies around you. When you see the scriptures that talk about 10,000 falling angels protecting you, do not be alarmed when you see the horses and the riders and the chariots coming to tear down your enemy. It will happen. And you'll be very, very surprised to know that it happens literally, not figuratively. You're going to see some supernatural stuff fall down, you guys. And I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. But you know it too. You knew it a long time ago. You've been talking about this for years. And now it's finally like you're like, guys, everybody's finally starting to wake up and you're like, dude, I've been trying to do this for years now. What took everybody so long? Maybe it was your persistence years and years ago that helped spark that seed of awakening in a collective. And now it's brought us to this point. So to you, collective, that have been preaching this message for years I say to you, thank you, because had you not, we may not be here preaching this message today. You know, they say, you know, the butterfly effect, you know, whatever your choices may be on this planet, you may think they may be small. One decision can send cosmic ripple waves in the universe. Change your decision in one way, one simple way. And it can bring life or it can take life away. The decisions that you're choosing to make now are bringing in abundance as above, so below. Jesus says, if you truly desire a wealth on your life in spirit or maybe just to live comfortably on this planet, to be able to pay your own bills, believe that you already have it. And it will be so. Your faith can manifest. That's what, that's the spark. That's the life spark. Your faith is the life spark and the key to all manifestation. Your faith you have to believe or it's not going to work. It's not going to come to you if you don't believe you already have it. Ooh, star seeds waking up all over the planet. I am so excited about this new wave, this new wave of star seed. Um, and I feel like the indigo children are mentoring the newest awakened star seeds that are out in the world right now. So you're finding young protégés that resonate with you. Or maybe if you are the newly awakened young star seed, you're finding mentors that have been around the block a time or two that understand you that you're like, oh, wow, I kind of see myself in you. These are those mentor um, and friendships that, that you want to see in your life. So you're going to be coming across other divine people with the same mission as you. Other people that resonate with the truth exactly the way that you know it. You're going to be like, wow, I feel like I've been alone my entire life. Like I was the only one that knew about this. And here this person knows the exact same thing as me. I love that. So Holy Spirit, give us a little bit more about this future timeline. What is my collective? What does this star seed need to know? The star seed needs to understand right now that nothing can touch you. The moon card coming out here is suggesting to me that you have a high priestess kind of vibe about you. 
This is the angel of dreams. This is you being able to look up at the night sky and see that moon as a beautiful friend instead of a deceptive energy. You can't be controlled by darkness anymore because you live in both, you find shelter under God's wings. So if you're locked in a cave or you're surrounded by darkness, God's right there with you. You don't see yourself in darkness. You see God putting an umbrella of his wings over you to shade you from the blazing sun, providing you cool relief in the evening from the scorching heat of the day of your enemy, right? This is you looking at world in a whole new way. This is you stepping into a, um, a period of isolation or maybe saying that you feel more comfortable being in isolation, being in this hermit mode. This is the angel of reflection. This is you being comfortable with me, myself, and I so that way I can see the things that I need to fix in myself. See, the enemy fears the hermit mode. A light worker thrives in it because we understand the power within our own isolation. <laughs> yeah, what the enemy means for our harm, God will mean for our good because God's got it all balanced out. Two of Pentacles. You may be juggling, standing in one foot in the 3D, one foot in the 5D. You may have a, a lot on your plate right now. <laughs> Maybe you're so busy that you don't have time to think about vacations and going out to eat or what you're going to wear on the next date. You're just wondering if, if you're going to be able to, to do your dishes in the sink today. <laughs> you know? Or if you're going to remember to change out that load of laundry. You know, before, or is it just going to sit in the washing machine and get moldy and gross? You know, are you going to forget about it? There's just a lot on your plate right now. So maybe being in a period of pause is a good thing. And I apologize. It's getting a little bit late here. I didn't mean to yawn there. But yes, lifting the veil, seeing everything for what it really is. Like I said, it's not taking much, guys. You're not really doing anything in particular. It's just God is blessing you with vision, blessing you with sight. <laughs> and he's also blessing you with spirituality and the Ten of Cups. He's preparing you with divine love, pouring it out over top of you as divine wealth. We said in the beginning here that you dreaming about wealth, being that wealth, that being that wealthy person, that you have to believe that you already have it first. This is saying you're also going to receive divine wealth in another way. And this is the wealth that you find in spirit. Ten cups and ten pentacles. As above, so below. In spirit, abundance is not money. It's not coin. It's not paper value. It's not monetary. It's love. Here on the 3D, coins, money, rule the planet. We need the money in order to, to survive because we're controlled by uh, a matrix of of men who like to stay in power, who are only thinking of themselves and not the future. You're a little bit different. You don't have a selfish mind. You don't want to be rich. You just want to be able to pay your bills and live comfortably and be able to do the things that you want to do in moderation. But you do not blink an eye for one second when it comes to what you value the most. And it's this Ten of Cups. This wealth is spirituality and love pouring out of these cups over top of your head. And you see how this card is bigger 
than the pentacles, bigger than the money. The divine love is coming out bigger than what everybody wants to see as far as blessings and abundance. You get it all. <laughs> you don't get to choose collective. You get everything. Because you know you already have it all. And amen for that. So let's go ahead and pull out some final scriptures for our star seeds that are resonating with this particular message tonight. Um, I'm real happy to see your confidence in this. And I'm glad to see that you're still focusing on your boundaries. Many of you are putting up boundaries for even yourself to prevent you from moving into toxic areas of your past. Maybe you put up a boundary that you'll never go back to, maybe made a promise to yourself that you would never date an ex ever again, that you would never allow yourself um, to go back to somebody who you dated once upon a time or maybe not be friends with certain energies any longer that no longer serve you. Making a stand, making a promise to yourself. I see New Year's resolutions as well. So that may be significant for somebody to start off a new year the right way. Um, I did that this year and it changed my life. <laughs> and I've never stuck with a New Year's resolution before ever. But this channel, this was my New Year's resolution that I would do this, that I would do this and not just do it for me, but I would do it for God and I would do it for you. And I'm glad that I never, that this was the only New Year's resolution that I've ever stuck out in my entire life. It makes me feel good, you know? And I do it because of you, not because of me. If, it, if I did it for me, I would have quit a long time ago because I'm like, I'd rather go sleep. <laughs> But I love doing this. I love pulling these messages for you. I love connecting with you. I love watching you change and transform and grow. I love your energy that you bring to my channel. Thank you, guys. This collective is blessed to have your energy as a part of it. And I want to take the time to thank you. Not like I don't thank you all the time, but this is special. So... I want to go ahead and start off with our messages here, um, our closing messages. It says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 6. And this is real significant to um, the message that I just got done talking about where the leaders of the world, the politicians, the, the people that make the weapons of mass destruction that are keeping the world in war, you know, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Those who live toxically, who weave destruction and pain into the world are going to receive that back on their own lives. Okay. Those who live in the spirit, meaning you collective, doing the best you can, following God's word, being obedient to the divine every single day, whether that's you see a piece of garbage on the ground and instead of walking over it, you reach down, you pick it up and then you walk into the store and then you squirt some of that hand sanitizer in your hand because you don't know what you just touched, right? There's my mom coming out. <laughs> um, you know, this is you doing the right things over what the easy thing is. This is the time. We are being judged by every movement, every action, every word, every gesture. It's coming out right now and it's, it's being documented. We are under a microscope. We are each of us on monitors, actual monitors up there. So wave hi. <laughs> I hope I'm doing okay. <laughs> you know, and, and you're being evaluated. Every single energy on this earth is on a screen. 
and your life is being monitored by the divine. Everything you do, everything you do. And I love how people are like, oh, you know, spirit can't see you in, in the bathroom or when you're, when you're doing this. No, no, spirit sees everything. <laughs> Don't let people lie to you. Spirit sees everything. <laughs> And they love talking to you in the bathroom. They love talking to you at the kitchen sink, too. They love talking to you anywhere that you can get a quiet moment. And oftentimes, that's in the shower, right? So, guys, I'm getting off topic here. Let's go ahead and continue on. Next message. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation he is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Psalm chapter 62, verse 1 through 2. Viewer sponsored as well. And one of those messages that came out earlier, that you are not hidden in the darkness anymore. You look at the moon card and you don't see deceptive energy and the things that go bump in the night that you have to protect yourself from. You see that darkness as a shade from God's very wings, sparing you from the heat of the day, the scorching heat of the day, the scorching heat of your enemy, sparing you that sunburn, right? He is your fortress. He is your rock. He allows you to never feel shaken because you know the truth. Holy Spirit, what's the last one here for my collective before we close this out? It says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you were made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. When they talk about you being baptized or being baptized in spirit, you made a promise before God and angels. Some of you have made commitments to God on the worst days of your life where you were like on your knees, maybe in the middle of the night, praying and begging God, God, please, if you just get me out of this, I'll do whatever you want. I'll, I'll be good. I'll go to church. I'll read my Bible. And God answered you and you're like, oh crap. And now God's coming. <laughs> You owe God a uh, a life, kids. You know what I mean? And he's not going to be the person that's going to be like, oh, well, you gave me your soul. You promised this to me and I'm going to make you work for it. And I'm going to take my your pound of flesh out in this. No, God's like, now the real work can begin. And he's going to love you until you are all better. He's going to love you clean. And you're going to be shoving his hands away. Like, Stop touching me. Stop hacking me. I don't. He's going to be rubbing dirt off your face. Licking that, that spiritual spit on that, on that cloth. And he's going to rub your dirty face. And he's going to clean up the enemy. And the enemy's like, ew, stop it. That's what it feels like. You know what I mean? The enemy is going to, to see all of this. You know, you've been brought up as God's baby, you know, from the baby Christian you were into the formidable, spiritual, beautiful angel that you are, right? You've come a long way. Take hold of that eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith faith. That's what it's all about. Your faith. And I don't know if it was this message that we talked about faith being so powerful and so strong in this message, or if it was the last two or three messages, I'm not sure, but, um, your energy is popping right now. Strength in this entire collective. I'm getting strength. You cannot be shaken. You are fully aware of what is happening in the world right now and you are eager to stop it, to change it, 
and to basically stick your middle finger up at it, right? You're done with, with the evil of this world, and you're ready to make a, um, a difference in it. Oh, yeah, I like that. Make a difference in the world, you guys. I'm right, I'll, I'll walk right alongside you. We'll make a difference in the world. We'll build bridges together. We'll go invite Buddha and Gandhi and Jesus and we'll get all of the, the deities and we'll all build bridges together to the one God, the one creator, you know, the source of everything, God in heaven. Love it. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and close out this message right now. I hope this resonated with you. Um, take care of yourselves, you guys. Protect yourselves. Um, keep your eyes open and stay prayed up. Because again, these boundaries are going to be met with people testing those boundaries, okay? The enemy is like a toddler. They're going to test those boundaries just like children like to test their parents. So stay protected. Stay prayed up. Take care of yourselves no matter where you are in the world, and God bless you all.